Okay, guys. So remember, we have to put the, uh, the target in the window. Just has to be right in that little spot. Okay. So, you know, again, on a target like this with this particular bow, the target is just above my knuckle. That's all I can tell you. Also, uh, Ben Telly, a guy named Ben Telly was asking about left or right wing feathers. Uh, you know, right wing feathers come off the right wing of the bird and they curl that way. Left wing feathers come off the left wing of the bird and they curl that way. So if you put feathers on that curl the same way, I know these are pretty boring, but I think you can see how they curl. Um, then that arrow will spin that way. Now, I use left wing feathers simply because Byron Ferguson said he used them. The idea is that when the wind blows, it's going to push that arrow down on your knuckle. I don't think that it makes any difference. I, I don't notice a difference. You know, the main idea of a feather is just to keep drag at the back of the arrow. Some Indian tribes even would just tie a little piece of rabbit fur there just to create the drag. So, you know, it's uh, six of one and half a dozen of the other. But uh, I, I think that uh, uh, left or right wing is perfectly good. You don't have to shoot right wing feathers if you're right handed. That's, you know, or left wing if you're left handed. That's not what it's about. But uh, anyhow, here's our first little shots of the day. Have to get used to it again. But you know, you can get some hits if you do these kinds of things. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, you know, I was asked why my arrow drops when I shoot, you know? A fellow was noticing that, that when I would shoot, my, my arrow will go down a little bit, you know? Well, the reason is, if you look at my arm, if I hold my arm out like that, and I start to push forward, watch my hand go down a little bit. You see that? You're pushing. Now you push hard, and the arm, the hand, goes down. Now, if you watch, there's an old movie of uh, Howard Hill shooting, and you'll see, before he releases, the arrow goes down. Now, why does that arrow go down? Is it because we're looking for a certain gap or something like that? No, the real reason is because we're pushing when you release, it's your left hand that pushes forward and pulls the string out of this hand. So the reason you're seeing it go down is because it goes down. That's all. It's just a, it's just a, a result of, of the push. 
You'll see it in Howard, you'll see it in me, and I suppose you'll see it in a lot of guys that shoot this style. And uh, if you do that kind of thing, you'll get some hits. Okay, back in a minute. I noticed on the highway coming up here that there was only about a third of the cars as usually is there. It's okay with me. I'm just going to leave that. It's just too sweet. You know, we don't have a clicker when we shoot like this. So, if a person, you know, short draws, as long as they get back to the clicker was off, they know it's the same distance. Or if they overextend, so it's the same distance, clicker goes off. We don't have that luxury. And I don't think it's a luxury. So the best way that we can get a consistent amount of force into our arrow is if we reach out all the way. You see, if we start from, from short and we start pushing, we could stop there or maybe there or maybe there. Just the slightest little variance. Well, that will make a big difference. If you're using a constant anchor, the same anchor, to get a consistent distance, this has to be consistent also. If this is always the same, this has to be the same. So I find that rather than pushing it on, it's better to reach out first and then pull against the reach because you know you're going to there. It's always going to go to there. So if you push, it can be irregular. If you hold it right out and pull, it's going to be the same. Okay? So... Uh, that's what uh, I'd say is our clicker, is reaching out and pulling against it. And uh, I just, I don't know. I just didn't want to shoot another shot, you know. <laughs> right? That's good enough. Yeah. Okay. Anyhow, back in a minute. Okay, guys. Yeah, I think that uh, I'll shoot this bull for a little while. And I think after I get a bit used to it, it'll be pretty good. Here, uh, having a shelf is a lot more consi uh, You have the, a greater ability to be consistent with a shelf than off your hand. Okay, yeah, it seems to me that I shoot off my hand a lot, and uh, but the glove, you know, it's a little bit soft, and so it can be pushed down or pushed away sometimes. Also, you know, you could grab it, and that seems the same, but really, look, that's a sixteenth higher, a sixteenth lower. You hardly notice a difference, and yet that will make a big difference downrange. So uh, I can see how people like their their little shelves you know it's it's handy and uh, it's about as modern as I want to get and uh, but you can see that with a little bit of practice you know you can get some good hits you know okay back in a minute shots.
just barely hit that fly in the eye right when I let go. I'm going to drag. I have this war with flies. Anyhow. There. Nice. Jeez. Really, if there was a god, there wouldn't be flies. You know? trying to screw me up. But anyhow, we got three good ones and one just on the high side of the uh, the lungs, but better than nothing. <laughs> okay, back in a minute. Yeah, just for ye of little faith, watch this. Oh Lord, save me from the mosquitoes! What? <gasps> Thank you, Lord! I have been saved! <laughs> okay, guys. Back in a minute. Yeah, guys, it's nice to be out here in the woods. They say I have a strange sense of humor. That was that for a joke. beautiful. It's really beautiful. You know, to be alive and, and not to be in pain. As I'll tell you, when you get old, you're in pain a lot. Sweetness. Yeah, you know, when you get older, you're in pain a lot. It's part of everyday life. So when you get a few minutes, give thanks for all you've got. It's a wonderful world. <laughs> it truly is. Anyhow, Gods are on your side. You get some nice hits. Back in a minute, boys. Okay, guys. Just change the angle a little bit. Deadly, friendly. I'll just leave that too, you know, like, when they look like that, it's just too nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I hadn't made uh, many movies in the last few months. I'll tell you, uh, after Donna died, I went over shooting, and uh, I had a thought that it wasn't very important that Donna died. You know, the Prime Minister didn't know it, the Pope didn't know it. <laughs> you didn't know it. There's six billion of us, and any one of us could pop off, and it means nothing. So I realized that it was very unimportant that Donna died. And then I realized that it's everything is actually very unimportant. Important to who? Important to what? Important for how long? And so I started to not bother talking, because what was the point? In time it's all lost. So I went through a period like that where uh, I just realized how unimportant everything is, you know. 
uh, it really is, <laughs> you know, whether it's uh, real big important things like religion or politics or who you're screwing next week, you know, not important, only to us. And so, uh, just to put it in perspective, uh, I may feel a lot of humility. I don't feel special or important. I'm probably helping you guys out a little bit, uh, just talking to you and teaching you a little bit about shooting and stuff like that, or a little bit about philosophy. But uh, anyhow, uh, <laughs> I came back, I started to make some movies, but uh, that was, that's what I thought anyhow, you know. Why should I try to dominate somebody? Am I that important? So on and so forth. Those kind of ideas. But anyhow, <laughs> when you start to think all kinds of crazy stuff, I guess you can tell somebody. But anyhow, you know, that was a nice little shot, so I just thought, I'll leave that there. It's as pretty as a picture. Back in a minute, boys. Okay, guys. <laughs> a little life lesson. If you live long enough, You'll end up all alone. I don't have one friend left alive. Every woman I ever lived with, went out with, is dead. Yeah, you know, you better take care of yourself, boys. You know, try to stay away from dirty jobs with lots of fumes and smoke and dirt. Try to eat unprocessed food, things like that. But uh, a lot of it has to do with your genes. One of my grandmothers lived to be a hundred. <laughs> but, uh, Every friend I had is dead. Cal's dead, Sharon's dead, Toby's dead, Donna's dead, you know, the judge is dead. Just I can guess go down the list. So uh, my grandchildren are still alive, you know, of course they're doing great. That's wonderful. And my two sons are alive. But uh, when you get old, you better take care of yourself because nobody will. Nobody will help you. Nobody will take care of you. Not really. Oh, they'll take care of you, all right. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a good life. You know. But uh, learn to be alone. Learn to like yourself. You're your best friend. Take care of yourself like you were your own pet. Put it to bed. Feed it. Exercise it. <laughs> Anyhow, it was just a little chat. But uh, if you do that, you'll get some hits. Back in a minute. Okay, guys. You know, a target like this costs about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. It's way beyond the average shooter, you know, you can't put that in your backyard. in your eyes. 
days. The, uh, the flies are a real factor, eh? Really. Okay. Yeah. Target, we're so lucky to have a place like this. It cost me $200 a year. It's called York County Bowman. And uh, if you're a younger guy, it costs you 300 a year. But uh, they've got great targets, you know, like this thing here, 1,200 bucks at least. By the time you pay taxes and shipping, 13, 1,400 dollars. So you can't afford stuff like that yourself, eh? And uh, it's just a real pleasure to come out here and be able to have a little bit of fun, you know, hang out with Mother Nature a little bit and shoot the breeze and hang out in the trees. And Slap the fleas. And, uh, you know, again, you know, get some hits. It's not bad. Great target. Back in a minute. Okay, guys. Another target. Got a cougar down here. It's warm enough, I'll tell you that. It's supposed to have reached 23 degrees today. It's warm. You know, I am enjoying this bowl. And I do think that uh, having a shelf is not a bad idea uh, with a bow like this, you know. But don't stop shooting your English longbows because they're not that bad. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Again, 45 pounds, got mastodon horns on it. Got my little string of silencers. Kind of pretty, you know. Anyhow. Oh, there's a new target. So we got some hits. On that particular target, I find that the uh, arrow needs to be down about the bottom of his foot to hit him on the chest like that. Back in a minute. Yeah, it's starting to get a little later in the day. It's not real late, but late enough. You ever eat pomegranate? They're great. Take a little break. Have a snack. Yeah, when I was a kid, I'll tell you about it, I've been in the army. I remember over in Cyprus, you could just drive the Jeep down a road, you know, and there'd be like pomegranate trees growing and branches might be over the road. I can remember just going and stopping and pulling down a pomegranate and eating it. Really good. Good to keep up your strength, you know. Good little energy. <laughs> One time I knew this Scotch guy, John. 
John Moran, I believe his last name was. I remember giving him a piece of my pomegranate. And you know, you don't eat this part here, right? But he didn't want to fart around with the seeds. <laughs> so John just ate the whole thing. I couldn't believe it. How bitter it must have been. John was quite a character. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll finish this off and we'll be back in a minute and do some more shooting. Okay, guys, see you later. Okay, now, we have a little javelina down here. Okay, anyhow, starting to get a little late in the day, and uh, I'm not used to having this much fun. But, uh, you know, I'll put that target right up, just on the right of that little bump. And also, so once the target is in place, it's in that place. That's where it's going to end up. So, first I aim, right? Target's already there, and now I do my form. I do not do my form, and then start looking for the target. Target's already there, right there. Now I do my form. That's it. Aim first, form second. about dropping the bow. It only costs 700 bucks. <laughs> Anyhow, there's our hits. Back in a minute. Okay, guys, so we've got a little antelope down here. I'm starting to get kind of tired, tell you the truth, here for a while. Getting tired. I hit him. But that wasn't so good. That was deadly right in there. You know, you've got to concentrate. When you get tired, it's harder. beauties. Anyhow, I think that's just about enough for me today. So I'll show you something. See this target here? Now, you see the one? It's on the side, but it's sort of higher in on the right. That's when I got a little tired. But you see the other ones? I start to concentrate again, right? Held it right on. That's the thing. you got to hold it just like here, 
you gotta hold it just like <laughs> you gotta hold it just like it's in a vice just like Howard said you've got to put the target in the sight picture and hold it still you don't have to hold the bow tight like a vice you're holding the target in the sight picture as still as possible like a vice anyhow when you do that even when you get tired you can get some good hits anyhow boys have a good time. Have a good life. I'll talk to you later. Bye now.